Hello, my name is Glenn Siegel. I am the president and co-founder of Pioneer Valley Jazz Shares, and we're delighted to have John Arapagon as our guest uh, in anticipation of his quartet concert. Um, by way of introduction, uh, John Arabagon won the 2008 Thelonious Monk saxophone competition, uh, was named 2012 Musician of the Year by the New York City Jazz Record. Uh, he's an integral member of Mary Halverson's ensembles, uh, Dave Douglas's quintet, Barry Altschul's Freedom Factor, and formerly uh, mostly other people do the killing. He has led his quartet uh, for many years and also a trio with Mark Elias and Barry Altschul. It's real pleasure to have John Arabagon in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Welcome, John. Thanks for having us, Glenn. Yeah. This is... So this is your sixth concert in six days on your first tour in over a year. Yeah. So tell us, how has it gone? How are your touring chops? I, you, that's a, man, we've been talking about the touring road chops the whole, the whole week in the van. You know, it, the first couple of days, we're like, okay, we're getting back into this. And then we hit our stride two or three days in and... It's just been fun ever mm -hmm. since. It's been great. The drives have been great. The we've been catching each other up with what we've been doing during the pandemic. We've been introducing each other to new music. We've been having tons of laughs, and and the music, as you'll hear, has been getting better and better every day. And I couldn't be happier with how they're interpreting my new stuff. Man. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Cool. So this tour is funded in part by a jazz road grant uh, administered by South Arts. It seems like a really innovative and working. Fun funding model. Uh, how, what was has what was your experience with it? Uh, this tour would not have happened without South Arts and Sarah Donnelly and and uh, you know Doris Duke Charitable Foundation and the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Uh, no, the support we've gotten is, was essential, especially for this tour, with with a lot of the promoters being really hesitant to start jumping back into live music, with people's budgets not really being set because they're like we have no idea when things are going to come back to normal, so we can't really set aside any money or hotel accommodations and things like that. So I booked this tour originally in January 2020, and we had 15 dates in a row, nonstop, one every night, and the drives were great. They were like three hours or less for every show. So, And when I booked the gigs, I was like, this is, and the money was really good too, because there were some schools involved. And when I booked them all, and the tour was fully booked, I was like, something's wrong here. It was too easy. It's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to come together like this. And then of course, like five weeks later, the pandemic hit and, and everything was decimated. But we were able to salvage these six shows and with, with getting the South Arts support, um, it, was, it, it was essential to, to make this tour happen. So mm -hmm. we're all truly, completely in debt to South Arts. Yeah, that's great. Um, so last year you received the Chamber Music America New Jazz Works uh, Composition Grant yeah. to write music for these musicians plus Ray Anderson, That's great right. trombonist. Uh, is that the music you're playing on this tour and, ten and at this show in Holyoke? No. no. We, in fact, we <clears throat> recorded, we did uh, two gigs and two live streams with uh, Quintet, with Ray. Um, and it's with Matt Mitchell on piano and Chris Lightcap on bass and Dan, White, Dan Weiss on drums. And we did those and we went into the studio late in March. And we got a whole record out of it. We got a great record that's going to come out sometime in the next year called Recharge the Blade. And Ray sounds fantastic on it and all these guys do too. And when we were prepping that music, I was like, man, we have another tour coming up in like three weeks. And like right when we finished recording I was like can I record can I write a whole new set of music for these guys because you know Ray is, was when, when you get to hear the quintet music Ray is completely integral to that entire the way that music sounds and the harmonies on the front line and stuff so I didn't want to play like a watered down version of that for this quartet tour so I said man there's got to be uh, there's got to be some new ideas rolling around in there um, that I can like draw from for the for this record and I've been listening to uh, I drove from Chicago to New York for one of those gigs that we did with Ray, and I listened to 12 hours of Weather Report, like chronologically. And since then, it's been a it's been a deep dive into Mahavishnu and that era, Miles and Herbie Hancock, Headhunters, and Wandishi, 
and Billy Cobham and, and all that, that kind of era of stuff. And I have never written anything. I, I've hinted at writing things like that. I have a tune called Kremzik on my Outright Unhinged record. Uh, there's one thing on the first Outright record. There's one thing on this Quintet with Ray. So I was kind of like, let me try to see if I can jump in and, and write music that comes from that angle more exclusively than other ones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Chris is an amazing upright player and just as good an electric bass player. So I was like, let me see what I can do. For, and some of the venues didn't really have access to upright bass, so I'm like, let's try, let me try to write a whole book of music for electric bass. Wow. And, uh, man, I, we are, I'm super happy with the results, and these guys sound amazing on, mm -hmm. on this stuff. Great. So tell us how you've weathered the last year. Yeah. Have you maintained your drive and inspiration, and what have you missed the most? Well, the, the last part's easy. The missing the most thing is getting to travel and play for people, for live <laughs> live people in the same room and playing with live musicians in the same room. And this tour has just been, I go to bed just smiling from ear to ear every night on this tour because it's what I remember. And last night we played in Roxbury, New York, and there were 60 people there, a big space. with Roxbury, social, Massachusetts. Roxbury, New York. Oh, New Roxbury, York. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, and, you know, they kept the social, social distancing thing going and... They ran it really well, and it was just, the crowd was just amazing. You could feel, I missed that energy, and it was really apparent last night with, with so many people in the room, so that part's easy. Um, the inspiration thing, you know, I think, it, I think I've think i talked to a lot of musicians and definitely a lot of my students and stuff, and that it definitely ebbed and flowed throughout the, the course of this the past year. Um, but luckily, I was, I spent several months in South Dakota, my wife's family, my parents lived there, and we split New York, right, when New York was closing down and everything. We, and we were supposed to stay out there for a week. It turned into two weeks. That two weeks turned into a month. That month turned into eight. And I found a canyon on the other side of the town, and I, I, I practiced for four or five hours outside in the canyon. And I never would have had access to that in New York or anywhere else. I never would have had the time without the pandemic to do that. So I definitely got a lot of practice time in and got some compositional ideas going. I got my soprano chops together. I got, it, it was a really, you, you try to make lem, lemonade out of lemons, right? You put it the other way around, you made one. Mm -hmm. So um, it was actually in hindsight, except for the missing traveling and touring and playing with people, a lot of my friends, it was a good year. But, it, but yeah, it was, I started reading more. So yeah, I had to find inspiration from other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you think the trauma of the last year has had any effect on the music, broadly defined? Man, you know, what's interesting, a lot of my friends and I, because of the last year, and you know, they always say, play this gig like it's your last gig. You know, they've, I've heard that since I was in high school, or I've heard, heard that when I was in college, and when I first started playing shows. And I always knew what it meant, but like this past year really hit home, right? And so these last five gigs, people have been really going for it the whole time, which is amazing. But also I feel like people feel more emboldened to try things, to try. People obviously had to get their recording, their home recording chops together, because that's what a lot of us were doing, um, home studio things. And people are starting to mess around with like home effects things and just trying to grow their music in a lot of different ways. And I think one of the positive outcomes of the pandemic is that people will be more at ease with like challenging themselves and challenging an audience to like listen to more interesting music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So you've had a number of recordings that came out in the last year or so. And one of them, one of them that I'm especially intrigued by is called Rebellions yeah. with a sax French saxophonist I hadn't known about Sylvain R Ruth Rifflet. Yeah, Sylvain Rifflet. Uh, so tell us about that project. Yeah, so we have a new album called Rebellions that came out in November uh, on BMC, a uh, label out of Budapest. And Sylvain and I have known each other since 1998. And he's been a great friend and a great mentor to me, saxophone-wise, jazz-wise, compositionally, and just like life philosophy-wise. We did, we won a Mid-Atlantic Arts Foundation uh, French American Cultural Exchange Grant back in 2013, I think, and we arranged uh, different pieces of Moondog, that composer, New York uh, composer Moondog, 
we did a tour with it. We did some festivals, and we just had a great time. And we always said we wanted to do something together again, but we just never really put it together. And then in 2019, we were like, man, we should try to, we should try to do something again, and, and like this time, write together and separately, and, and put it together. And we had the idea of uh, taking uh, influential speeches uh, dealing with like you know, rebellion, civil, rebe civil rebellions and, and, and justice and so social equality. And it just seemed at the time when we were working on this in 2019, it seemed really pertinent to, to, the, to the world, you know. And little did we know that by the time the record came out and, and even the months afterwards, it's even more pertinent to what's going on. And using your music to say something, you know, just have have a stance when you when you play, and it, you don't have to shove it down anyone's throat or anything. But so we took, uh, we each found four or five speeches that were influential to us at the time. We we found one by uh, Greta Thunberg, we found one by Emma Gonzalez, we found one by Paul Paul Robeson. Uh, I used the inspiration of the American Revolution as as one of my pieces for that. Um, Sylvan found some great French ones about independence and and women's quality um, and so the interesting part for us was not only finding the speeches but also whittling them down to be able to use them in, in song form and then composing in completely different ways for each of the seven or eight or nine songs so that we're not using the same method of attack for each one so it was really it stretched us compositionally as well um, as well as melodically and rhythmically and, mm. and, and harmonically and things like that so uh, we're super proud of the record. Jim Black sounds amazing on it. Uh, the bass player Sebastian Boisal is a great French player too, and I've played, had the pleasure of playing with him a lot. And uh, it just seemed like it came together super easy, and we're super proud of the results. Mm -hmm. Also, the combination of like tenor saxophone with mezzo soprano saxophone, and sometimes I play sopranino saxophone. It's just an, it's an interesting front line that also spurred some different compositional ideas so mm -hmm. if anyone has a chance to check out rebellions yeah. by sylvan Raflay and, and myself it's it's let me know what you think of it <laughs> yeah no i'm really looking forward to hearing it um so assuming things continue to get better vis-a-vis -vis the pandemic what are your hopes and plans for the next time period yeah i mean i have a ton of compositional ideas that have built up over the course of my canyon practice so i'll slowly try to probably take a little break from it right, right now after this tour is done, but when I get back to it, probably jump back in and try to write some more. Um, some of the gigs that were supposed to happen this year for the, on this tour got postponed for April 2022. So I'm going to try to book a tour for that, for this group for that time period and maybe probably a whole new book of music for that too. So mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Um, I play in Barry Altschul's trio, The Freedom Factor with Joe Fonda. And we just had a new record come out, I think last month. I think it came out on Not Two. And uh, Barry sounds incredible on this record. It's just amazing and an honor to continually be playing with him. A living legend of, of the music. And so we also had, a, we were supposed to be on tour right when, right at the beginning of, of the COVID thing, when it shut down New York. So that tour got postponed this year, which got postponed the next year. So, so Certain things are starting to pick back up, and fingers crossed that they'll happen. So, I mean, the ideal thing is that we get back to normal and we get to bring the music to the people again, but it'll be interesting to see how long that takes. Yeah. Well, John Arabagon, thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to the music and your continued work in the music, which has been outstanding so far. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Glenn. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Priscilla Page, Vice President of Pioneer Valley Jazz Shares. Welcome to this live stream concert of ours featuring the John Arabagon Quartet. We'd like to extend our thanks to the folks here at Wisteria Hearst Museum for providing this lovely setting for the concert this afternoon. And we'd also like to thank Scott McPherson and the folks at Holyoke Media for their te technical expertise allowing us to bring this music to you. 
We'd also like to thank our board members, our business sponsors, and our Jazz Share members for making this music possible. And this has been quite an unusual ninth season for us. We have two more concerts planned, and then we have our 10th season under underway um, with concerts beginning in September. This music is provided to you free today, and we encourage you to make donations at jazzshares.org. Thank you, and enjoy the music. Welcome to the John Arabagon Quartet.
Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for being here. Thanks for having us. Super excited to finish our tour here at Holyoke at the Wisteria Hearst Museum. Uh, please say hello to Matt Mitchell on piano. That's Matt Mitchell. <laughs> Chris Lightcap on electric bass. Chris Lightcap. That's Dan Weiss on the drums. Dan Weiss. My name is John Robigon on the compositions and saxophone. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, we're finishing up this six day tour and we're going in the studio to record all this music tomorrow. So hopefully sometime in the near future, you'll be able to hear it. Uh, this tour actually is made possible with the support of Jazz Road, a national initiative of South Arts which is funded by the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation with additional funding by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. So thank you to everyone involved there for enabling this tour to happen. Thank you to everyone at home watching. That first song was called Sundance and we're gonna continue with a suite of tunes and I'll tell you more about them later. This first song is called Hoodoo Two. Thank you. 
Thank you.
Thank you so much. It's Dan Weiss on the drums. Dan Weiss on the drums. Dave, you want to join us, man? You want to join us? It's Chris Lightcap on electric bass. Chris Lightcap on electric bass. How about it for Matt Mitchell on piano? Matt Mitchell. Yo. Oh, we've got one more tune for you. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to Glenn and everybody here at Pioneer Valley Jazz Shares. Thanks to everyone at Wisteria Hearst Museum for having us. Thanks to everyone listening at home. Thanks to these awesome musicians for these last week on the road. Thank you. It's been such a blast to get to play with real life people again after so long and for real life people again. So thank you. Uh, we've actually got a special treat today. One of our good friends, David Lazar, who plays trumpet, lives not too far from here. So uh, I'm making him play with us. <laughs> on something, yeah, with the mask on. Yeah, trumpet with the mask on. Uh, on a tune he's never heard of or seen before. <laughs> this, we're going to we're gonna close this and feature Mr. Chris Lightcap to start. Uh, this is called Needles. Thank you.
Special guest, David Lazar on trumpet. <laughs> Matt Mitchell on piano. Chris Lightcap on the bass. Dan Weiss on drums. You go. John Robigon on saxophone and compositions. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Hope you had a great time. We did. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Good night.